you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question for yourself before listening on. Now, of course, since the question is asking for the drift speed of the electrons in the wire, we can take a look at the formula that relates drift speed to a few other variables. So drift speed turns out to be represented by the symbol V sub D, and if we look at the equation, it's kind of buried inside, it's right there. Indeed, we probably want to solve for V sub D first, the drift speed, and then we can talk about what all the variables stand for. So we can divide both sides of this equation by N Q A. We'll do that on the right side as well as on the left side. On the right side, the N, Q, and A will cancel, and that's gonna leave just the drift speed behind. Okay, so we can see down here what the different variables represent. Probably wanna pause the video and just read through it a couple times. Now, it's probably a good idea also to include in the list what I represents. That's simply going to be the current that's flowing through the wire, and that was actually directly given to us as five amps, so that's taken care of. A, the cross-sectional area, was also directly given to us, so that's gonna be pretty easy. Even Q is sort of known here. It says in the question to assume that each aluminum atom supplies one conduction electron per atom. The key phrase there is one conduction electron. What they're essentially telling us is that for Q, we can use the charge on an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. The challenge behind this question comes from finding N. We have a definition for N, of course, the number of mobile charge carriers per unit volume, but more helpfully, we're gonna need a formula for N. So that's our next step. So this turns out to be the correct formula to calculate N. I'm not even sure the book actually gives us this formula directly, but in any case, the term right here is going to represent the density of the material that the wire is made from. So in this case, it will be the aluminum density. This term N sub A is simply Avogadro's number, which we recall from good old chemistry is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then this happens to be the molar mass of the material. And again, the material in this case is aluminum. So we're gonna carefully plug in for all three of these terms so that we can compute N. We're gonna be careful to watch our units. So let's take a look at it. So here we have the value for the density, here we have Avogadro's number, and then here we have the molar mass. This number, you would have to go to your periodic table and look it up, and you'll see that it's roughly 26.98 something. You can safely round that to 27.0. Now, you'll notice we've left a gap in the setup here, and there's a reason for that. If you look carefully at the units, you're going to see that the grams will cancel with grams, which is great. Moles is going to cancel with moles. And so what we're left with essentially is atoms per centimeter cube. The problem is the centimeters cube. That's a non-standard unit for volume. But fortunately, we left space so that we can make a nice conversion. And it turns out that 10 to the 6th centimeters cubed is present in 1 meter cubed. So this is a necessary conversion so that we get a standard unit of volume. This way the centimeters cubed will cancel out. So we would pick up our calculators and process this calculation next. And when you do that, you should get 6.02 times 10 to the 28th atoms per meter cubed. And that will be indeed the correct value for N. Remember, N was the number of charge carriers per unit volume. Charge carriers per unit volume. That's exactly what we have. We have our charge carrier, which is the aluminum atom, per, or divided by, our volume, which is in the standard unit of meters cubed. So now that we have the value of N and all the other values for area, Q, and I, we can plug in to get the drift speed. So here are all the known values plugged in. We've omitted including the units just for simplicity. When you crunch that down on your calculator, you should get a drift speed equal to approximately 1.3 times 10 to the minus four meters per second. And that is indeed the correct answer. If for any reason you needed to convert that into millimeters per second, you would simply multiply by 10 to the positive three. So if you did that, the drift speed would become 0.13 millimeters per second. Either answer is acceptable. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. And remember that you can send in your own question to the email address listed on your screen.